I want to give all praises to Yahweh, my Hashem, Yahweh Shai, to give me the spirit to do this video. Let's jump right to it. Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 13. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Us brothers in this truth need to really pay attention to the scripture, okay, about us mortifying the deeds of the body. Okay, because it says after you shall live and we want to live. Okay, we want salvation, man. We want our new bodies, man, so that when we get that new body and get that perfect spirit, we won't have to think about this. Why? Because we're going to be perfect, man. There will be no need to mortify. Okay, we're going to be getting on the other nations and judging them about doing what? mortifying their members because they got to adapt to what the law okay the righteous law of the new world okay new jerusalem all right so as you see time approaching and you see these wars and everything sparking up you see it's close man it gets closer and closer day by day okay the days are shortened as the most high says man okay so we got to get better at offending less and we got to get better at mortifying our members, man. Look closely into your souls, brothers. Now let's go into the blue letter and mortify in verse 13. Strong's G 2289, Thanatao, Thanatao. To put to death, to make to die, destroy, render extinct, by death to be liberated from the bond of anything. Now we know we will not be fully liberated until your Yahweh Shah comes, okay? But that's why it comes to the scripture of offending less. Okay, we gotta be better at mortifying, better at offending less, okay? And it says, literally, to be made dead in relation to something, okay? So we have to kill things off, man. Right now is not the time to be getting worse. It's a time for your light to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. It says abound in the grace, not decrease. You don't decrease spiritually within the grace. Now you have moments, okay, where you might decrease to increase, okay? That's that when you are changed to a lower state, but you gotta be patient. And the Lord can build you up, break you down, and build you up. But only the humble and only the meek are going to be built back up from getting broken down. So they can do what? So they can learn better and better how to do what? Mortify their members. Okay? That's what this lesson's about, man. Sit down and really examine yourselves, man. This is a life and death situation, man. The most high is not playing. If you bullshitting just because something ain't happened to you yet, man, that don't mean it ain't around the corner, man. Hell, it could be tonight. It could be right now. That's how swift the judgment of the most high is, man. It's very swift. All right? Okay, from there, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, meaning put it to death. Mortify it, man. Okay? For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And that hell is that destruction, that fire. Okay, that nuclear destruction, man. Where nothing but pain is going to be, man. Horrible, horrific pain. Can you imagine you melting in fire, man, and nuclear fire at that? Can you imagine that? Your skin melting off your body like a liquid. All right? It's not going to be good, man. So this lesson is to exhort you brothers to do better, man. To really, really think about it, not just talk about it, but really sit down to yourself and really think of what you need to fix and what you need to get better at. Also for myself, okay? Included. Verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. Now, what does it mean by if it offends you? Let's break it down. For one, we know you offending the law and not doing what you're supposed to do 
that's offending because your conscience is going to be defiled because you know better. You know what you're doing. You're doing wrong and you're doing it willingly. Okay? That's going to offend you. Also, even if you are doing something lawful, but that lawful thing is taken over to the point where you can't even be fruitful in the word. Okay? You're not even feeding the flock because your mind is what? Your mind is too much into that lawful thing. For example, you like playing basketball. Well, instead of you feeding the flock, you ain't did videos as much because you have to court hooping. Okay? Or you like playing video games. So you're playing video games for hours and keep blowing off of doing the work. Okay? There's many examples. Okay? Those are just two. All right? So though that is lawful to play basketball, it can become offensive if you put it first. A matter of fact, I got one more example, which is one of the main ones that could really throw you off. Women. Okay? Maybe you met a fine woman. Now you putting her in front. You going to the movies. You going to all these places with her because you met her and you just flaming in love. But now you ain't doing the work no more. You telling yourself in your head you're going to do it, but you'll never get to it. It's been five months. And you madly in love. She's pregnant. <laughs> but you ain't did no work. So is it lawful to be with a woman? Yeah, but guess what? It can become offensive. Okay, that's why I say cast it off, mortify it, man. Okay, you have to mortify your lust of all these things in the world, man, because these things in the world can take over, man, before you know it. All right, and you just bugged out, man, with demons on you. So be careful. Okay, from there, let's go to Sirach chapter 18, verse 20. Before judgment, examine thyself, and in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Right. So in order to get better at mortifying your members, you have to be able to sit your ass down and spiritually think, okay? And not be biased to yourself. Spiritually think of what you're doing wrong or what you're lacking in general, man, okay? What's stopping you from pushing the word harder? What's stopping you from reading, okay? We all go through it, man. You have moments where you're not reading like you're supposed to and different things are the truth. But we have to sit down and say, what is stopping us from doing that? And that takes examination. But you do that before judgment, as the scripture says. Before judgment, examine ourselves. And in the day of visitation, when the Lord comes back to bring judgment on the world, thou shalt find mercy. And that's what we want, man. You're doing the work because you want mercy. So do the work more efficient. Okay? Day in, day out, man. Walk more as the children of light, man. So whatever darkness is illumined and trying to get to you, man, you got to put that to death. You got to mortify it, man. Cut it off. Okay? Because I'm going to say it again. If it's taken over to the point where you can't be fruitful, okay, it's not going to hurt you to cut it off, man. It's going to hurt you to keep it in your life. Because now you're going to be left behind when the Lord comes back. You don't want that. All right? You shouldn't want that. Okay, from there, let's go to Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, what does that mean to what I'm talking about? Why did I read this scripture? Because if you have an issue, right, and you're struggling with something that is offending, that is, it has a grip on you, you need to pray. We have prayer for a reason. Either you believe that prayer works or you don't. And if you don't believe and you're shaky on if prayer works, then you lack faith. You don't have faith to begin with, man. What are you doing even in the truth if you don't believe that prayer works? It said, ask and you shall receive, man. So you make your prayer without wavering and pray that whatever demons is messing with you, okay, whatever has a grip on you, that the Lord gets those demons out of you, man. And that you may become more fruitful, man. You pray about becoming more fruitful. You pray about mortifying and being able to have the strength in the spirit, to have a quickened spirit, to let that whatever go, man. If you're just having trouble about it, fast, pray. Okay, you fast and you pray. Especially if you're trying to really cut something off to have a grip. You got to fast, man. You got to pray, man. Okay? Earnestly, too. You got to pray earnestly, man. 
with fervent prayer. You mean it. You believe that you come into your house by Shema Shaka for help for real. Okay? And believe that they will do it because you're coming to them and you believe that they can help you. It's all about faith and belief. Okay? To be able to sustain. Okay? On this narrow path. Within this straight gate. Man, because it gets tough. That's why it's called the straight gate. It ain't easy. But you got to go by the instructions of the word to be able to survive. Man. Okay? So with that, I hope all you brothers were edified, man. And hey, man. If you're watching this video and you were edified, hey, sit down somewhere and think, man, what do you need to do to get better? Okay? Put the phone away. Turn that damn thing off. That phone can be a distraction, man. It is a damn distraction. Turn the TV off, man. That show you like to watch. Turn it off. Okay? Tell that girl you'll meet her next week. All right? And do what you got to do. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, to give me the spirit to do this video. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to your Akhmat that is doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.